Hello Sacred Souls and welcome to another episode of the Sacred Soul Podcast. Today something very very exciting, we are speaking to Rob Comba who is in his own words a cosmic architect of the mystical and a beacon of spiritual insight. Rob has a multifaceted background in esoteric studies, scientific inquiry, the human chakra system and many other modalities and he's warmly inviting us all to embark on a transformative journey through his latest new discoveries in the ancient I Ching and astrology. Rob has written a new book called The Lost Octave and this is what we are going to talk to him about today. This book talks his readers through the error correction codes of the 432 divine archetypes that align to the harmonic resonance of Mother Earth. Experienced through the expansion of 64 hexagrams into the sacred number 72, the hyper-dimensional field of collective awakening and embodiment of our own divinity. This discovery serves as a bridge between the seen and the unseen, inviting his readers to explore the depths of their own astrology and cosmic imprinting to connect with the universal heart. Wow. Hello, Rob. We are so excited to have you on the podcast today. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much for this. And uh, so great to be part of, you know, what you're bringing through and sharing this message out into the world. And yeah, I, I would say um, a little bit of background. I mean, there's so much to really cover. But, you know, seven years ago, essentially was when I had this kind of, I suppose you could say soul awakening in a way. And that led me straight into things like energy healing and trying to learn about the chakra system. I literally had no idea about any of it, it was a completely different world to what I was used to. And so, you know, through all of that, I just absolutely loved it all, you know, and went into so many modalities. And in the end, I, I actually formed several of my own modalities because it sort of nothing quite fit with exactly how I wanted to express and, and do things. So over the last seven years, I've basically been guiding people through consciousness uh, into different portals, stargates into their chakra systems and getting to know themselves on that sort of spiritual soul level um, and it was really through all of that um, work over the last seven years that then I started to look more into astrology and as I was doing that I came across the I Ching that had been linked to astrology uh, through a system called human design which was basically this sort of uh, modality that had linked it all together but as I was looking at this map uh, I could basically see that there were gaps within this map. And then really, as that was happening, the Lionsgate happened on the 8-8 last year. Um, and so literally on that day, um, I just looked at this map and I didn't really know anything about the astrology or the I Ching so much, really. I just knew bits and pieces. And then on that day was just like the epiphanies of where these gaps were what it was all about, like how to take this into the next dimensions. Um, and then that re basically revealed this this octave and because there was eight missing gates within the I Ching. And so it just came to me straight away that this was this lost octave um, and it just occupied everything for about, you know, three, four, a whole week. It was just a complete, you know, immersion into this. Um, and then that's basically when I started to realize that what was in the sky at the time was Venus in Leo. And so then I knew that this was a connection, that it was a Venusian wisdom coming forward for our time to move us into the Aquarian age. And so I kind of say this book is what we should have known really up until this point. And so it's, a, it's kind of like a reclaiming from the past because it was always there. It's just that we didn't have the key or the pattern to see it. Uh, and really, I came to it from an artistic point of view. I didn't really come into it so much from astrology. So I think with that view of it, of geometry and, and sort of art, then it was able to be seen. And so having to then work it all out. And that's really how the book started to to come about. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, that's fascinating. And, and I watched your um, interview with Heather Endsworth. Um, a few weeks back now and also um, Pam Gregory's recent one as well and as soon as I saw you on that on those channels it, you resonated with me and I thought wow he's talking about some really poignant things here that are going to really carry us through into this new age this new you know the new human beings that we're going to evolve into and this work I feel is integral to that and interestingly when you were talking about the Venusian side of things 
around about a similar time, which was around 2017, I too had an experience where my work changed dramatically in that I wasn't really resonating so much with the one-to-one -one readings that I was doing and the one-to-one -one healing so much. And I was starting to channel, because <clears throat> I do a little bit of trance work and transfiguration. And I started to channel, and Beth was in one of my trance groups where she was obviously witnessing um, the transfiguration. And it wasn't someone of this of this world it no. was someone of a different world it wasn't like a humanoid no. kind of it, it was definitely an alien being of, yeah. of some description and the, the, the feeling that I had was that it, this um energy that I was transfiguring was a Venusian energy someone that perhaps was coming from a different planet altogether like Venus and I thought this is ridiculous because like you do you think oh my god I can't I'm not channeling aliens <laughs> you know that but kind then of you see it you're physically but you seeing physically it you could see could see this energy yeah. you know this being and um as the years went on, I went through a real kind of dark night of the soul after this experience. And my whole life kind of went up and down and all over the place. And I, I went through lots of heartbreak and lots of kind of um, loss and change and really kind of heart focused stuff and started, um, you know, having meditations where I, I wasn't really channeling um spirit people anymore I was channeling energy planetary energy and I got kind of more into the astrology astrology stuff and so when you started speaking about that and you was talking about Venus and being the eight-pointed star and all of this kind of information that you was um talking about with Pan a, a light bulb moment went off in my head and I thought wow this this is the other pieces of the puzzle that I've been trying to find and looking for within my work so and I think this is going to resonate with so many people that work you know in healing modalities whether it be you know in the kind of astrological planes or whether it be shamanic healing reiki healing um ayurveda which is also something i'm studying at the moment i think these codes that you that you talk about and the lost octave that you talk about it resonates through all of these modalities and so it's it's something that is you know esoterically can be picked up for everybody to use in the, even in the mundane nine to five going to work and looking after your children I think the stories in your book the star law that you're talking about and you start to obviously explain in your book I think is going to resonate deeply with everybody and um, so I'm so eager to know a little bit more um, about certain areas yeah so I'll just I'll just touch on that as well like because yeah. um, obviously the term star law may be new to some people um, and it's actually uh, as you know it's spelled l-o-r-e because uh, which is really it's rather than L O uh, L A W, so it's really the what it means. It's the it's the sharing, like we would do around a campfire, you know, looking up at the stars. It, it's the like a verbal tradition of sharing these sort of rites and these initiations, and you know, this is going all the way back to the ancient ways of how we would do this, and that's really how the lost octave was shared. So tracking this back was basically. You know through my own consciousness was basically being shared this initiation way back in a past life to then remember it in this one because the the final teachings really of of, of any sort of tradition of the tantric traditions of uh, you know they're normally shared from the master to the student at the end you know it's sort of like you've done all this work of training and then you get given this kind of prize to say you've now you understand it and here's the final gift and so this is what this is about. This is that last transmission of the I Ching that was never written down. It was only ever done through star law, through sharing. And so this is now what's coming back, and which is great because it means that our vibration as a collective is now at a point where some of these things are coming back. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about star law is it's universal, you know, and that's why I think that it links to everything and everything I've explored you know, from from ancient Hebrew and the Kabbalah to crystals to sound to, you know, as you say, the energy system, chakra system to literally people's daily life. It, it resonates with everything because it's un of universal consciousness. And so that's why I think that everybody's going to be able to find an ingredient. You know, it's got all of the 72 names of God, which are linked to the angels, the 72 angels. And so it doesn't matter what you connect with, it, you know, there's something for everybody inside yeah and that's fascinating because also something else that you was talking about before as well with regard to the star law being like fables and stories 
um, and myths in you know and, and that kind of thing when when we look at the bible uh, just as a as an example not that i'm picking that one out to to pick on it but just if we pull the bible in as as one of the examples there's lots of stories and myth within the within the, especially the old testament where you know stories are spoken about and they were given in the book i think as a way of us being able to interpret them internally and apply them to our own emotions feelings and experiences in life and i think your book is going to be sharing those stories but perhaps that have come from more of a, a truth perspective of you know where we really come from because ultimately that's all we really have been searching for all our lives isn't it as as human beings is who are we what are we here for and what is the point of it all you know <laughs> and that is pretty much it in a nutshell isn't it that's what we're all kind yeah. of looking for the answers for you know yeah, absolutely. And, and the thing is, what's really interesting is through this, because, you know, I, I had no sort of religious connections growing up or any anything like this. But what's quite fascinating is that every single Greek myth, every fairy tale, every nursery rhyme and every biblical story that I've ever looked at is all star law. Yeah. So, you know, to, it's so interesting to see those correlations. And just recently I was sharing about how the the, the eclipse that we just went through, you know, how I saw it actually as the stone that's placed over the tomb, you know, and so then the, the stone rolls away and then of course the, the light comes and that's the resurrection. And so when you can see it through, I say through the star law and I teach you all about different things like the, the eight levels of interpretation, which you speak about how do we interpret There's you know, there's eight levels in which we interpret any pieces of information. And so, you know, some are literal, you know, where we, we feel like, you know, in the biblical stories, they're like, say, slaying a lamb. Well, that's, you know, that's like one level. That's not really what it's saying. And then, you know, you have the uh, allegories and, you know, the sort of more symbolics. And so the book teaches you all of this, that how we read everything, we can do it through different levels of understanding. Um, and so it's really great to see one story and look at it from the literal all the way through to the you know sort of transcendental and then you get a grasp of what it's really pointing to and all of it is pointing to us yeah i found that really interesting as well with what you were saying about um like when you look at it from one angle you start to see it in everything that you that you look at and everything you research and about how the mythology carries across through all the different stories and things it's the same with synchronicities when you start looking into them you see them everywhere even like the links um why you were saying in your interview with pam about links to angel numbers as well and the links even with the dna and the the fact that it goes all the way back to tracing back to one mother for all humans and everything else and it was just so like i feel like if that's more digestible for other people to understand like it will be in your stories that's going to just change everything mm -hmm. for everyone because they're going to understand it from how just the select collective are at the moment it's going to be on such a wider scale yeah no that's a really good point and so yeah so basically the the idea of the lost octave is that initially there was eight gates that i found that was missing so that's a traditional octave so seven notes and then the eighth note is the end note but also the beginning of the next octave on a piano but what you can do is that's only just the white keys but when you involve the black keys, which are like half steps, then it actually makes it a chromatic octave, which is 12. But of course, that's how I started to see, well, of course, there's 12 astrological signs. So this is how it started to move. And I realized that there was basically these 12 master gates. And so really, when you know these 12 master gates, you know the entire or all, all, all the other compartments of 72 that are like fractals, you know, all of the 36 deacons. So like you're saying that really, we can just learn this one pattern and then you see that everything is mirrored in in our reality so when you apply it to anything you do in your life you know then you start to see wow that's it's all music it's all octaves it's all fractals and so when you know like a handful of codes in a way handful of patterns then everything works out the same and as i say the really the best thing to learn is it's all us so if we can learn ourselves better then we learn that we're not that separate from reality. We, 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 we are, that is, and we are like mirrors of each other, you know, not identical mirrors, but we, we mirror each other in our patterns and our ways. So whether you learn the universe or learn yourself, it's, you end up seeing that it's the same, it's the same being at the end of the day. And that's, 
that's so interesting what you just said there well because that is really what i what i was channeled um with with venus to see and what 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 was shown to me exactly what you've described there is that we are one and the same so we you know we are made in the likeness of god if you like we, which um you know god as i see it, is the great omnipresent divinity which is if you want to try and find a you know a symbol for that it's like I always liken it to like the northern lights of the cosmos and it's kind of like that that pattern of energy but if you look at all of the stars and all of those fractals that are up there in that ether that empty space it kind of makes up you know maybe tiny particles of atoms and all these other different things and I'm like again I'm not scientific but what I was being shown was that we as human beings are an integral part of the energy system that creates the cosmos and is part of the cosmos if that makes sense so us being human beings, our, our whole process and procession of reincarnation and being here, the whole purpose of it is to raise our vibration through love consciousness and constantly evolving into these different storylines of, of our existences and lives to keep um, making love vibrations and get into that elevated consciousness so that we are, you know, kind of vibrating that love frequency out and that love frequency from all of us and all sentient beings are then contributing to Earth's vibrational frequency and that thus contributes then to the solar system thus then contributes to and we keep going out and out and out into that great void that we call the galactic and and it kind of showed me that earth really is kind of like a cell a cell structure if you like in this big vast you know world if you want to call it a world out in the galactic ocean in the cosmic ocean we're just a cell as a, a part of that you know galactic body if you like and the more i was kind of seeing that the more it was kind of making sense to me that if god is the the space in the ether then yes we are all created in his likeness and everything that is up there is in here is, is within us the same mm -hmm. and it, it just became so interesting to me that we are all so connected we all contain this star energy within us all of the planets all of the the cosmos everything resides in the body so if that's the case, then we can naturally access the consciousness of that because it's there, ready for yeah. us to use. Like you say, it's just unlocking the, the energy to be able to tap into it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it becomes it becomes so glaringly obvious. You know, uh, two things I would say are really glaringly obvious. One is the fact that, you know, all creation is in a way feminine. Yeah. you know and how that has been completely cut out of our known knowledge mm -hmm. um which i think is why you know I, I basically say this like this the divine feminine teachings this lost octave really because you know through the venusian energy because it it starts to highlight inevitably like what has been missed or what has been cut away and so it's so glaringly obvious it's like once you read the book it's like you can never say you know that we, we've missed that part anymore it's so it's so there and so you know we can explain it like a, in a beautiful artistic way as you know I, I come at it from that angle and so I write in the book that the 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 galaxy is basically the the dark the black mother or the black madonna in a sequin dress mm -hmm. you know and so it's like when the light hits the dress and she dances you know it's like then the stars are twinkling yeah. and so really that's the, the goddess understanding of that everything that we perceive or it has to be through the goddess that's how it manifests into a thing you know that you could say the no thingness is you know potentially a more masculine trait but this is all about understanding the everythingness and that's really what the book of changes is the I Ching is called the book of changes and so it's about everythingness and so that's why when you find these patterns crystals colors sounds you know our dna the you know angel numbers numerology you know the quantum physics it's it just everything fits like a glove and through all the calculations that i've done there's not been one thing that hasn't fit not one thing that's been off by even like one degree yeah. uh, and this is all linked to you know the great pyramids for example that you know everything that i've done links to all of the mathematical calculations to the great pyramid which is essentially a, a grand marvel of mathematics of our of our age so it's it's just miraculous really it's too it's too perfect in a way to to express so yeah we're talking about the numbers as well and how the numerology all is just so 
obvious. When I was re- uh, watching your interview, I rewatched it this morning and I was sat there and I was like, right, so you had your epiphany on the 8th of the 8th in the Lionsgate portal, found the 8th octave. And then I was adding up all, all these different numbers because I've been seeing 2222 two, two, two for months. Obviously, adding that up is an 8. My age, I'm 26, the 2 and the 6 is an 8. Um, my year of birth, 1997, adding that up and then adding those numbers up makes an 8. I've been really feeling into the energy of Venus, feeling into sort of Aphrodite, if you want to go into like the mythology of Venus and you know the links there. It's all just showing synchronicities yeah. to us. Yeah. And then with you channeling Venus as well, it feels like this has just been waiting for to find us. Yeah. And I feel like that's going to be the case for a lot yeah, of people. Everybody. That it's been finding them in their own way. 100%. And when you were talking about um stories and fairy tales that really interested me as well for that moment so and we'll come to the pyramid bit in a second because that's yeah. another interesting story yeah, that i want to i listen to to kind of grasp um with your work with um richard edward robert edward grant sorry um and so when we're going back to the fairy tale side of things when i did my studying as a psychotherapist we did a lot of um deciphering fairy tales the psychology behind it and there's a book by Bruno Bettelheim which is all about deciphering fairy tales and looking at the kind of um, emotional connotations and the psychological components that link the Oedipus complex and the Electra complex and all these kind of intricate psychological things which we won't delve into because we'll lose our listeners on that but interestingly I've been really drawn to the fairy tale well we call it fairy tale but it's actually a Disney movie called Moana mm-hmm. and I've been watching it over and over again lately not just because we've got children in the house anymore because they're little boys but um which they probably wouldn't be as interested in Moana but um we was really like getting into it and and every time I watch it 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 fills me up with this emotional feeling of like euphoria and and just deep emotional it's the representation of Mother Gaia isn't It, it? it is and interestingly it's about this this little girl from like um I can't remember what island she's from. Tafiti. Tafiti, that's it. Yeah. And um, she has to take back what's been lost to Mother Gaia. And it's almost like this lost octave, mm. what you're talking about, is is what you're giving back to Gaia. You're giving it back to to all of us here. And, and obviously, as, as giving it back to us, you're giving it back to Gaia to, to kind of put things right, to put things as they should be, to start us off on the course that we now need to go on back to perfection where we originally were in the Lemurian times. Oh, yeah, when you say that as well, that is so... Yeah. Yeah, that's so apt as well. That is literally what, what yeah. it's for, is isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, it's... Yeah, I mean, wow, that's, it's so it's so beautiful, you know, because we it really shows to me from knowing the book that, you know, intuitively this is what you're experiencing, which yeah. matches so perfectly with the message of the book, even though it's not even, you know, shared yet. And so... A couple of things. One I would say is uh, mathematically, this is where it go- becomes unbelievable. We speak about numbers. Mm-hmm. So um, very basic is that the I Ching originally was 64 hexagrams. Now, a hexagram is basically six lines, mm-hmm. right? So it's 64 times six gave 384. That's the, the total amount of uh, archetypes, you could say, of the collective consciousness. Now, when you add in the lost octave, it made it 72 times six. Well, 72 times six is 432. And 432 is the resonance of Gaia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So this is what I mean about that this, what you're sharing about intuitively about this connection to Gaia. Well, it's in the numbers, you know, it's, it's right there. And that's where it goes into 432 hertz, the frequency sound. And so this is the synchronicities that are in the book where I was like, wow, this is just too perfect. Um, you know, and then when it's a link to Mother Gaia, then it's linked into the moon harmonically and it's linked into the sun. So you've got now uh, what I actually call the lost octave in one part is the error correction codes for our time. Mm-hmm. Because like uh, like a binary, there's binary computer systems and quantum fields and basically it has the same process there there are these error correction codes and they mirror the same formula as the lost octave wow. so what you've said about this missing piece that's come to essentially correct self correct where we've been and it expands our understanding of archetypes that we have 432 in our collective consciousness and of course 48 of those we haven't known 
So mm -hmm. it's bringing us back 48 different archetypes to start to look at and embody, and that's going to move us into this harmonic alignment again. And that is so interesting as well, because I've, I studied, um, I'm, a, I'm a gong master and I do sound healing as well. So that really resonates with me also. And then interestingly, what you were just saying then about, you know, finding all this, the, the lost stuff, the lost octaves. I think that all of what you're saying channels into every single modality, like, you know, the astrology, looking at the dwarf planets as well, like we're discovering new dwarf planets and, you know, it's, it's amazing how these dwarf planets are being discovered as we are evolving, as our consciousness is evolving. So, it, so are we, and this is where creating it, this yeah. is what, this is what I was going to say. This is where I start to resonate with the channeling that I've done is that, you know, we are co-creatively channeling consciousness. And so maybe we are contributing in our energy um, to the creation and birthing in the kind of cosmic womb of new planets being being birthed for 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 all of us because we're all kind of connected to it if that makes sense because I, I know Pam talks a lot more about the dwarf planets because I know there's been quite a few um that have been discovered more recently like Hermea and Gongong and, Gong and Maki Maki and um uh, Selassia and all of these other planets and I, obviously I study astrology but I'm not on Pam's level by no way shape or form because she's amazing at what she does but it's interesting that all of them have stories behind them that are very shamanic in nature, which connect to Gaia. And they are, you know, they're very much bringing us into a new kind of way of seeing and experiencing the world around us and within us. And like you're saying, it's all about, you know, raising Gaia and, and raising its vibration, you know, and I think personally that we all we all knew these things years ago but they've been stolen from us i believe that we would have known these things but that they've been stolen from us and okay. now we're re we're, re we're rediscovering it <laughs> coming back to Moana, yeah. taken away selfishly and then you have to put yeah. it right and take it back exactly it's almost been like a and, and, and again that kind of brings me to the point of why would that happen so every mm. time you you kind of find a, a solution in your mind of what you think might be, then there's more questions to, yeah. to kind of ask, isn't there? But it's so interesting what you're saying about it reverberating through all of these different modalities. Because there was a, there's another part that when you're just going to go check my questions here, because I wrote so many things down, because <laughs> I don't think we'll have a, enough time in our hour to cover everything. No, and, I'll just like... say, and I'll just say on that, on that you know, uh, the, the book is, um, the book expresses this idea of basically this, inner pole shift you know the yeah. earth is due a pole shift yeah. you know which is really interesting basically meaning that the the way the water goes down your plug hole will now go down in the opposite direction which is kind of crazy so you know I like to think about but this is actually an internal process and what this does is what i've discovered with the book is that you're now looking at it from the galactic viewpoint so the 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 way of ether uh, the initiation of ether is basically in the book because it's looking at it from the stars looking onto earth because mm -hmm. you know we've kind of been in this um space where we're not we've we've seen it just purely from a human perspective you know which is valid because we just take ourselves to be a human you know in a spiritual experience or in a, a universal experience but this is now reversing it where you understand that you're that universal consciousness seeing it through the human eyes and so that's really where we can then see wider we can see more we can see the dwarf planets we can see the galactic core we realize that the that it's all connected so that's really what the book is shaping and, and even how the book's narrated is actually in a way backwards it's reversed engineered mm. you, you you are given the end at the beginning yeah so you know um because that's really how we're meant to move forward you know it's we're meant to know that it's going to be like that film you're speaking about it's like in a way you know at the end of the film it's not going to be a tragedy like a romeo and juliet there's going to be a happy ending so but you know you don't know how it's going to happen but you kind of have a feeling that because it's a disney film it's going to be a happy ending somewhere mm -hmm. so this is what it's like and when you do that you can then enjoy the film even, mm. even through the bits where you're like, oh, this bit's stolen, this bit's, you know, tough and what's going to happen. It doesn't take away from that, but you know, inevitably that in the end, it's going to be successful, whatever it is. And so 
when you apply that to your actual human life, knowing that whatever you do, it will be successful in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a, such a different way to move through your life. And that's what this book is empowering. You know, the feminine consciousness is empowering you to say, you will make mistakes, you will fall, but you will also be picked up. And in the end, you will, you will get to where it is you feel in your heart that you're meant to get to. And that is such a huge relief in in human experience and that's really what the book's uh, offering yeah and and i think that's that's great and how does that kind of you know from an individual perspective like an everyday person how how you know how does that kind of resonate with us in you know being able to access and and manifest from our own kind of you know true purpose and helping ourselves to be in an optimum health levels and how you know, how, how is all of those kind of things gonna gonna kind of contribute to that for us individually yeah so this is really where the beauty is the story right mm. so like you know like that film like you know like little red riding hood for example or goldilocks and the three bears they're all astrology you know mm. so it's almost like if your birth chart aligned to goldilocks and the three bears or you know or little red riding hood then you would understand at the beginning what the story was that you were meant to walk yeah. and what to look out for you know, so for example, like Little Red Riding Hood, it's like, you know, sh the red symbolizes the sun. So she's the she's the walking sun. She's the sunshine. And of course, the wolf at that part of the year is the autumn equinox. And what it is, is that, you know, the sun goes below the horizon. So it goes underneath. So it gets swallowed. And that's the symbolism of the wolf eating the sun. So the wolf eats Little Red Riding Hood, you see. And so, you know, but then it's like, okay that's that part but what happens to the sun afterwards is that once it gets eaten actually then it's then saved and it and it comes up again you know on the winter solstice it, it has the christ sun is born so if you know that's your life plan through the story of the stars then you're like okay at some point in my journey i've got to look out for the big bad wolf so to speak so i've got to be aware but at some point I'm going to go, I am going to travel into the underworld or the depths of my subconscious, maybe the dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. But through doing that, I'm actually going to raise into the highest consciousness that I can. And, and this may be a thing that happens to you every single year, you know, it happens at the same time because that's part of the star law. You know, once we hit a certain astrological sign, that's what the story is. Mm -hmm. And everybody goes through everybody else's story. It's not just singly to do, but it's a place that you can see. So that's what I mean. If you know the story, then you know how to move through it and say, OK, this was predicted that I was going to have this difficulty. Yeah. I just need to keep my strength, my face, fo focus on what it is. And then out the other side, it's going to be this. So that's really where the empowerment comes from. You know, I think when we go into things blind, you know, not having any direction yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and also then suffering mm -hmm. a, a direction that's when you know things like depression and and stress and we're like what is happening to my life it's falling apart but actually maybe it was falling together yeah you know, there's a process like, is what you're saying isn't it there's a process to go through and each person in their unique um blueprint of their you know birth chart if you want to use that as the as the the focal point there is going to go through different journeys in that lifetime that they've decided to come and live in this particular lifetime and they're going to go through these peaks and troughs of their life but knowing these stories that go alongside um and and these fables that talk you through these experiences show you that actually you will come out of the other side of it and it's not all doom and gloom so that in itself knowing that stops you and prevents you from perhaps going into the depths of despair into the the, the lower energy mm. and keeps the vibration at a much higher level through those experiences and then you you reap the rewards when you come out the other side of it and and if we're going by what i felt with my channeling as being the the sole purpose of us is to you know incarnate to keep in the love vibration and keep our frequency higher because that's then contributing to mother gaia's 
energy frequency that makes perfect sense that in the evolutionary grand scheme of things your book is going to be an integral part of giving people that blueprint if you like that story to follow the manual to go through mm -hmm. to go actually yes this is where you know this particular story comes into play but we know that at the end of it the sun is going to rise again yeah you know and if that is a part integrally of your birth chart and your sun sign and whatever it is that links that together you mm -hmm. know that that's a repeating pattern throughout your life so you yeah. can sort of preempt it when it's exactly come. and go for the higher octave of it so yeah. for example for me i have um my ascendant is literally 27 degrees of capricorn so i've recently had um pluto going over my ascendant and obviously most people fear pluto as, as a as a planet um a dwarf planet um because it is the death births and transformations but i equally have pluto in my eighth house of libra uh, you know which kind of resonates with relationship and also transformations within relationship so i've over overgone this last sort of seven years per se because it's a very slow moving planet pluto so as it's coming over my ascendant and it's now finally you know birthed it's crowned <laughs> and it's, it, the labor has been endured and it's come through into the first degree second degree of aquarius you know, I have gone through lots of loss, change, and lots of births in the family, lots of great grand grandchildren being born, lots of um, um, nieces mm -hmm. and nephews, great nieces and nephews being born, and, you know, relationships ending and beginning, you know, so knowing the story behind Pluto, you know, which I'm sure there will be one in your book as well, like as a, a kind of one that correlates to Scorpionic energy and Plutonian energy, it kind of helps to guide you through that process of what you're going to endure at that period of time for however long you're going to endure it for and what you're going to ultimately come out the other end with, you know, and to try and nurture the higher vibration of it rather than get carried away into the lower vibration of it, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, yeah, really well said. It's, it's um, yeah, the planets are obviously that I put in about the planetary rulers, you know, inevitably, but yeah, yeah. it's probably more about the zodiac signs yeah. because each, each zodiac sign is basically split into three deacons each. Yeah. So there are 36 deacons and each of them has a story, you know? And so when you were saying about 27 degrees in Capricorn, that's... Uh, oh, that's... sorry, 26 degrees, mine is, sorry, 26. Oh, 26, yeah. So that's the that's the dolphin. Mm. Right? So, which is interesting to think about that, you know, in Capricorn, there's a dolphin. But actually, mm. if we, when you go back, you know, the sea goat was the original sign for Capricorn. Yeah. It's really interesting. So it's like, okay, so then there's dolphin energy right there at that point of the year where it's the darkest. So all of a sudden now you start to think, well, how can that help me with this rebirth? Well, of course, you know, the, the dolphin, it's, it's all about the play, the joy, mm -hmm. you know, it's all about both hemispheres of the brain. And, you know, in that Capricorn placement, it's being able to look into the subconscious as and dive into the depths, you know, going down into Atlantis, you know, sunken Atlantis, mm -hmm. as well as like, you know, going and flying through the air and seeing rainbows. So at that point of the year, that's where we can start to say, okay, this is my story. How can I apply that to what is happening? And so like, this is the time for me to swim deep now and go down into the sunken Atlantis and find the lost, you know, uh, kingdoms under the oceans and what was the, the jewels there. So Whereas we could just interpret like I'm going for a dark night of the soul, yeah. but now you've got this understanding of, okay, this was already pre-planned of what I'm meant to do at this time. Yeah. Um, and like you were saying, Beth, like the, these things are, uh, these happen every single year or like repeating all the time. And so everybody goes through it. But, you know, your, your actual story is something that is very, you know, connected to you. And so, as you say, you know, it's like, okay, this part of my year, and you'll probably find that, you know, when we have like memories of in our photos that every year we may visit the same place mm -hmm. or we may feel the same thing or connect to the same energies or be interested in the same thing. So once you start to see those patterns, it's not like, oh, why is this happening? It's like, ah, this happens every year. I know I need to take more self care. I need to go in. This is a time for me to go into the, the depths or this is a time for me to release my work. And so we work with we work with the changes rather than like being hit by a change and going, well, how, where did that come from? So <laughs> that's the that's the empowerment. So you're kind of anticipating what's going to happen before it happens. Like you say, knowing the beginning 
you know knowing the end at the beginning if that makes yeah. sense. so you're kind of preparing yourself for what's going to happen mm. which I think's fascinating and that's the hear what my story is I'm so excited to know <laughs> yeah, yeah I, can, I can share yeah so um but yeah that's what I call in the book I call it the the what came through was the law of octaves mm. you know, because it is that the first note is the end note and so really it's kind of like a loop it's a, it's an o yeah it's a circle you know it's this is feminine so that's where it's beautiful because we know that this the, at some point we will hit the same note but we just move into a different octave another higher octave or you know you'll actually go down octaves as well you know it it's fractally bigger and fractally smaller but in the end they both meet at the same place yeah, and yeah. so um but yeah with sagittarius um well sagittarius is like the the mystic you know that's the so all of the gates have uh, four psychology words. So I call it the quadrinity psychology. And so this helps us understand four stages of, of being able to anchor the starlight into the physical body. So the acronym is LITE, L-I-T-E. And that, so the first part of everything is light. That's the, the light word, then integration, transformation, and then embodiment. And this is the, the descension of the starlight into form, so to speak. You know, how does it how does that star look like in human form? And so Sagittarius is, you know, it's the mystic. So, you know, it's it's really about, you know, that occult wisdom, esoteric wisdom, like you were speaking about myths a lot, you know, that you have that love for myth because it's like a something you recognize in you that all of that makes sense when it's explained in a myth you just get it instantly yeah. and also it's a beautiful way to explain you know we can explain things through science which is what people have done you know nowadays and it's like wow it can be quite dry you know and it's and there's a bit of a, a mental overstimulation rather than an actual feeling whereas myth is like it's like reading children you know books to a child you know and and also telling those stories it's great for the person who tells it and it's also great to receive it and you can learn profound like yeah. years light years worth of information in one myth in one story and that's why we love films and we love books and we love you know pictures because as i say a picture says a thousand words so it, it gives us a chance to just to feel and so that's really what the gate of mysticism is it's it's you have to, it's learning directly yourself because you know you can hear a story but then it's for you to walk through that story because then you'll have a different take on what that myth there was there was missing ingredients there's always missing ingredients in myths mm -hmm. and that's the beauty you know like they never went through that one door they could have done so what so it's it's for you to explore it's the explorer's gate really yeah. you know and then you've done your great adventure and then you come back and then you share that adventure of what you found and so that's the best way for you to learn is to know that you know you probably will make wrong turns and you'll come at some have some harsh lessons but the amount of profound wisdom from that harsh lesson it's like invaluable because you can literally shortcut people so quickly and say i did that i wouldn't try it i'd go down this route because i had great success and all of a sudden now you've helped hundreds of people in just one in one sentence and that's similar to to like the lost octave it just shows you there's this, there's that, there's this, you can choose whichever way you want to go, but this is really where you're meant to follow. Uh, and so, yeah, that's really what the Sagittarius is all about. So it's so interesting because yeah. when you're saying about um, the fact that, you know, reading these is going to open up that part of you that's going to allow all of the information to flow through and allow you to take on board this information so much more digestibly as it being, you know, like a story or a myth, even just reading um, fairy tales, to my children they mean something completely different now and you see the the um metaphors and the symbolism yeah, in the story yeah. and you see those archetypes now as an adult reading the story but they're taking that in as a child and they're understanding it on a subconscious level so it it just yeah. is so interesting because that's obviously going to be the same the same thing here it's unlocking that knowledge that's already within you and you, yeah, take you feel it, on it on a soul level and you actually yeah. feel it rather than just reading it mm -hmm. as like scientific information mm -hmm. it's so yeah, much it's more just, digestible isn't it yeah that's what makes it human you know that's yeah. what makes it a, a, a human it's a star I, the book is called our story in the stars mm. because 
it, although it's in the stars, it's us, you know, yeah. and so we, we are that we are basically moving through those stories. And, you know, it's, as you say, you can start to see these archetypes. But now what would be really great, I think, with the book is that people can look up in this night sky and they'll be able to say, oh, tonight is the clash of the titans, you know, where, where you've got Jupiter and Saturn in the night sky at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, this was the great battle of, of the titans in the Greek myth. And so I think then when people, the next generations and, and we start to all know this, people can look out in the stars and they can understand what that what that was all about and yeah. it relates to their to their life you know so yeah it's it's a beautiful thing and that's why i say the star the star stories is really the the essence of this book you know it has all the technical data like all the way down to the amino acids of the dna and you know into the quantum field i mean it's really quite crazy the the numbers and everything that i had to learn you know i had to learn the human mm -hmm. genome you know, through this book, I had to learn music through this book, I had to learn really all of the star law and all of the constellations in the night sky, not just the 48 we know, but the, the, the 88 stars, and then also the ones that have been cut out of the star maps. So I've gone all the way back into those. So it's, it's a huge compendium. But as I say, once you know certain things, certain threads, it, it just all falls into place. So are you, would you, when you're talking about the other stars that you've had to learn, is, is that including like asteroids that you've had to kind of incorporate into that? Because I know from an astrological point of view, sometimes when we're doing birth charts, we can look at certain asteroids and they're, they're, they've all got mythical stories behind them also and, you know, what their meanings are. So is that what, you, what you've kind of had to learn about for that? So for this one, it's really about the stars mm -hmm. because it's that's really the, the essence of really the Lost Doctor. It's more about stars. But of course, you know, after this, I mean, there's already like eight different courses I have off the back of this. There's it's so much information mm -hmm. and the, the start, you know, the planets uh, themselves, because they all resonate at a certain frequency, yeah. uh, you know, asteroids, dwarf planets, you know, all of these things. It's just it's a huge thing to do. So, you know, I do plan at some point to do that. Um, but with something like the planets, something that I did do was all the planets had frequency hertz and when i <laughs> when i added all of them up and connected them all it made the same frequency as the king's chamber wow okay. right so actually there's a sarcophagus within the king's chamber so isn't that interesting that when you add all the planets hertz frequency together it's the same frequency as the sarcophagus within the king's chamber wow so essentially when you're laying in that sarcophagus because really it wasn't a sarcophagus it's a portal it's a stargate so it, it it takes you into other dimensions but when you lay in that you know you are at the same frequency hertz as the entire you know solar system of planets making the same noise but you know it's not necessarily audible but it's the same frequency so this is starting to make sense about why these things were built how they're all linked and you know modern science is only catching up to what they knew in ancient egypt which is you know which shows that that civilization was way more advanced yeah. than even what we are now that's so interesting and obviously we're going just to, to cap on that as well you were an integral part of deciphering some of those etchings that were in the king's chamber with um robert edward grant weren't you when he went there and he'd been going backwards and forwards to the king's chamber and to egypt to try and decipher the etchings and you were an integral part of decoding that if you like and kind of finding the astrological components to it because he talked a lot about in his interview how um, you kind of got the constellations in, in, in the background there and that it kind of made sense with how um, time moves forwards and backwards with the way it kind of goes around each way and in the same way that you read a birth chart. So perhaps you could just tap in on that a little bit to kind of, you know, give a little bit of information on, you know, how you got involved with that work and how you ended up getting in, you know, involved in deciphering everything and what that means. Yeah, no, absolutely. It was, it's an amazing thing, you know, um, and it's still unfolding, you know, in many ways because, uh, you know, Robert's finding different um, drawings and glyphs. So essentially how it how it sort of worked through, as I say, I started to see that actually I was finding Shakespearean mystery keys within astrology. So, you know, this was a 
this is quite interesting because you know Shakespeare's work is not has never been linked to astrology uh, and because it was linked to astrology I could link it to DNA so all of a sudden you know Shakespeare's works which is just known sort of mainly as sort of like poetic works they're way deeper than that they're they're astrological and in the DNA and so that's really how I linked into uh, Robert Grant and um, you know now part of that quantum math magicians team um, and so through that he basically showed uh, this new app that he's created um, it's still in development but it, it's going to be ready soon where he was seeing these drawings on the walls and of course there's no hieroglyphs in the king's chamber at all it's just blank walls essentially but when you look through sort of multi-dimensional eyes then when you sort of activate that within you then you start to see patterns and you start to recognize certain shapes and so he'd been doing this over and over so he showed me these you know these drawings that he'd made and he was saying i don't know why that you know there's an arrow here there's a lady there there's a this this and this but of course through the understanding of astrology and understanding more so the deacons of astrology as he's sharing these pictures i'm thinking well this looks pretty much like the deacons of astrology and a lot of the deacons of astrology come from the original dendera stone which is in egypt so all of a sudden, as he's showing us around the room, I said to him, well, I have a feeling that these are all constellations and these are all deacons of astrology. So there's a video of it on, on YouTube of the actual where we did it, you know, live. And so we started to go around the room and he was saying, well, there's this on this wall and this on that. And I said, well, yeah, that's in the in the procession of the equinox. That is this deacon. That is that deacon. And it was just literally falling. Every single picture he'd done was falling in the perfect uh, angle of the procession of the equinox. And then it was really dawned on us that this is the grand procession cycle. And this is where, and it was all going in that processional cycle. So which follows the, you know, the what we're actually going through. And so that's really where you get that sense that we're moving backwards in the grand great procession and then moving forwards in the procession which is like likened to the sarcophagus. So if you imagine like the human form in the sarcophagus is almost going forwards and then on the walls, you're actually going backwards, which mirrors the hypercube of essentially astrology. Um, and so that's really how it how it came about. And so we just started to do this more and more. And then basically from that, we've got a, an absolute amazing map of all of this. And all of this was tied into Leonardo da Vinci's uh, depiction of the Last Supper. Yeah. So, you know, for those that don't know, basically the Last Supper, the, the walls um, and the, the image that you see is basically the same dimensions as, as the King's Chamber. And the table that's there is symbolic, essentially, of the sarcophagus. And wow. so, and obviously the, the Christ is in the middle. And, you know, that faces, when you, when you look at the image of the Christ in the middle and you've got Mary Magdalene on the side, which some people say is St. John the Baptist, but it actually works out better if it's Virgo. It's actually Virgo placement there. But he, you know, you've got the sun right in the center, which correlates to Leo facing east, which is where the Sphinx is, which is exactly where the sun would be rising in the age of Leo. So all of a sudden now we can actually date when the Egyptian, when the pyramids were built based on the eastern direction of when the sun would come up for the spring equinox. So for sure, the date of the pyramids is far greater dating back than we know. And so through this sort of work, you know, approximately calculating that it'd be 13,000 years ago. So if, you know, I mean, most history is up to say four or 5,000 years. So all of a sudden we've, you know, over, you know, three times our history just through this one discovery. And so then, you know, the more that we can go into that and realize that if they knew the sound of the planets and made it the same dimensions as the sarcophagus, that how did they have that kind of technology? It must have been, you know, that that Atlantean race. It must have been that higher technology because we can't even do some of this stuff like re replicate the pyramids now so this is where 
the beauty of all of this wisdom coming out and being able to know ast astrology and the signs and the stories we can literally look at ancient things like the pyramids and understand them for what they for what they are which is essentially a stargate into multi-dimensionality wow that is fascinating that is and it's yeah. interesting what you're saying there about you know when you're you're looking at the um the, the etchings and moving forward moving back and the similarities to the sarcophagus thing when you're thinking about death and and life we feel like we're going forward but actually when we die we literally we're going back aren't we we're kind of moving back into you know our our, our real selves our real energy field of where we, we can't this is just the physical meat so isn't it really that we're living in and, and, and it appears in our consciousness that it's going forward but it's actually we're in, we're going back and when you look at that from consciousness and you know from a from a um a psychotherapy perspective you're looking at that from consciousness and then the subconscious is the, it's the same thing consciousness is moving forward and and your, your unconscious processes they're all about going back and going back into the darkness that back into that kind of um collective if you like so it, that's so interesting when you start looking at it into yeah. that into that realm even saying about the um the fact that they were so much more advanced obviously they must have been to know yeah. all of this yeah how they used to obviously mummify the bodies yeah. and bury them with certain things to take with them to the afterlife and things like that it just yeah. makes you think and essentially that they had that knowledge they had more knowledge than what we and have. essentially what you're saying is that you know leonardo da vinci and um um my brain should Shakespeare. Dead. Shakespeare, sorry, <laughs> were ultimately tapping into this same consciousness yeah. to be channeling that through their work of drama and creative spark and, and Da Vinci through his artwork and all of these other great people, great mathematicians and, you know, like Einstein and all these people were channeling all of these, um, you know, collective wisdom, star law, star law, if you like, they were channeling this even back then. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of coming to the point now where we're getting so close to really prove. I mean, it's quite very well known that Leonardo da Vinci was actually visited the Great Pyramids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Shakespeare Mysteries was um, was actually really a, a, a group of people. It wasn't a, a, a person. And mm -hmm. so, you know, these were mystics and, and I'm sure that they would have gone to the pyramids. You know, like these ancient traditions, they often went to sacred sites and learnt. And so Leonardo da Vinci took that wisdom and then put uh, put it into paintings yeah. so it's there for us to understand it and the great thing about that last supper painting is which i basically decoded through the astrology was that i was starting to think well where where would you have to stand in order to perceive this vision you see so because often we're we're looking at the vision itself but not from where that person where we're looking from you know so it's that understanding where we are in relation to what we're seeing and the uh, where it where he would be standing or where we where we view that painting is in the astrological sign of aquarius which is our time now yeah yeah wow. so he, he he preceded and coded into the painting that we would be seeing all of the astrological signs and symbolism from that Aquarian age. And that's why it's kind of like a time capsule. It's almost like these consciousnesses are embedded in time and vibration so that when we're ready and we move into that, then we start to see it so clearly and it becomes so obvious. And that's where, as you were saying about this forwards and backwards in time, um, you know, that this spinning, moving forwards, moving backwards, well, what's kind of going to blow your mind is you can do a real simple exercise is that it's the same spiral. There's not two spirals. It's the same spiral. Right. And you can do a really simple exercise because if you move your finger, like if you look down and you move your finger in a clockwise direction. Right. And then you bring your finger up and you keep going in a clockwise direction. You bring it all the way up above your head. Right. So keep it in the same direction. Look above your head and then look which direction it's going in. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> it goes anti-clockwise right yeah. yeah oh wow so hold on a minute so you didn't change the way in which you moved your finger no but what changed was it's where you were perceiving it from yeah so you didn't actually move it moved and so this is where it's this understanding that we're in the center of this per perceiving moving forward in time and moving back we're at the center point of that but if we were to move into the stars we would see it very differently 
And then when we look, we see it from the ground, we see it very differently because we're either end of that, that pole. Mm. But when we're in the center, we see it as opposites, you see? So isn't that so fascinating that actually the forwards and backwards in time is actually the same spiral perceived in two different ways. That really goes to show that it is a one thing being perceived in two diff as two different expressions. And that that's why it all moves in synchronicity because they're moving at the same time because it's the same wave. Yeah. And so this is like, these are like the epiphanies that we start to see, wow, this that's quite mad that we're going, we seem like we're going forwards and backwards, but actually it's it's one continuation. Yeah, yeah. which links as well to the as above, so below. And everything within is without as well. Microcosm, macrocosm, it's all connected. And also the energy can't be created or destroyed. It's just continuous loop. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And so this is this is the, the privilege and the beauty of us having this experience on the earth. You know, often it, it's, it's a tough place, you know, it's there's okay. lots of highs and lows, you know, but that's that's the beauty of us because in this time and space we are on this precipice of in going into or we are really into now already the Aquarian age and so you know we get this opportunity to experience that shift and all of this illumination coming forward from you know being lost and being you know repressed it's just literally sprouting like a blossom you know <laughs> so abundantly and you know say about this number eight you know the number eight is connected to abundance as you know and obviously this year is an eight as well yeah. so uh, and this year we're going to have an 888 which will be the one year anniversary of this book yeah. it will be the 888 gate so it's just yeah it's it's too it's too amazing at the moment to see and i think that's why we're also seeing the polarity of a lot of disruption as well because you know it, it, there's that sort of balance as, as we're blossoming there's also a lot of things are crumbling and so it's a it's a it's a fine one to walk at the moment but i think through things like this and what you're sharing and you know it's going to give us the tools to move through through it how would you say this has changed your life rob like having these discoveries and doing this how, how do you feel this has changed your life like in regard to being on your soul's purpose and we you know going in the direction you're going in right now yeah good question i mean it's probably a lot to integrate, to be honest, already, because it's been such a short time, you know, and I, it, it, there's been so much. It's been a relentless, you know, as soon as it came through and it's been coming through ever since like that, it's just been 24 hours, you know, every day. Of the week. It's just morning till night. And there's so many words, you know, the book is is, is quite big. And so, you know, it's, it's probably over 500 pages already and it's like wow. packed. So yeah for me it's it's an interesting one i would say that it's it's the beauty of knowing that everything that you felt in your heart to be true all of those dreams all of those stories you know it that is what we were meant to do we were meant to experience all of it and we were meant to move through it we just didn't have the understanding we didn't have that manual you know when we when we were born we didn't come with an instruction manual so you know we've kind of been wondering what it is but all we had to do was really go back to our essence and, and look up at the stars and remember what it was and so i think for me it's it's been a miraculous journey like to see that we are absolutely without doubt we are all connected and we are all one this is all meant to be how it's meant to be you know even through the pains and the struggles it's all written there mm. and this is really for me it's like this light bulb came off that this is such collective uh wisdom and such collective consciousness that once this is shared it's just going to elevate every single person individually and there's there's so much stuff in there and it's such, such a beautiful way of doing it as well like there's there's different paths we can take you know but this is an artistic way it's 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 a way of beauty to move through it all with with graciousness and love and it, like i said it about keeping that vibration of love throughout yeah. you can't help but have that because it's all there to show you it's all supporting you everything's for you in this understanding nothing's really against you it's just that we will inevitably face different different paths um in terms of me on a soul level i think i was pretty lucky before the book because i really went into what is consciousness and what is the self and what is that so 
I think without having done that work first, I probably wouldn't have understand understood this, or there would have been more of my own opinions in the book rather than it just being a pure transmission, which it had to be uh, with transparency. So yeah, I would say on a soul level, it just it just made me smile of like, it just proves everything that I felt. And then on a on a on my life, obviously, like, you know, I never planned to be sharing this sort of stuff. I never planned to be connecting with people or, you know, and so for me, it's a great opportunity, you know, as I love to share and, 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 and show ways to help people improve their life. So for me, it's just a, a great medium that I think is just going to connect to connect to all walks of life. Fantastic. And I know you, you run a lot of workshops, don't you? And a lot of courses as well that people can kind of jump on board with. For people that are just kind of maybe getting involved in, you know, consciousness and understanding this, what would you suggest be a great, you know, just for listeners that maybe they've listened to this, they've maybe listened to a couple of other podcasts and they're inspired and, and they've got this drive to kind of pursue this truth, this in, integral internal truth. What would you suggest be the best place for them to start with that? Best play. Well, I mean, the book, really, that's that's the whole idea. I mean, uh, I know it sounds, you know, you could say it's a biased view, but it is because it is, it is there because, you know, you could read this, you could read these stories to your children. Mm, that's what I'm you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, and you, or you could take the essence of the story and make your own story up, you know, involving that archetype or that or that mythology and share them and they would understand it. And all of a sudden they're understanding quantum level you know, astrology through purely for a story. So, you know, it's, you know, or you can listen to that, you know, I've, I've made every musical note and frequency for all of the gates. So you can put on and understand the notes of your natal chart. So you can just sit there and listen. So yeah. it doesn't really, where it, where, whatever you're into, it's all there. If you're into colors or crystals, or if you're into, you know, the, the understanding of the signs themselves, or if you've never heard about it, or you're, you know, you're really advanced in it. There's, there's, there's gifts for everyone. And so I think it's just, a, the book is an invitation to say, it's, it's here for you, you know, yeah. just, just, just to read it and go through it. And, you know, and really is also about learning, not just your sign, it's learning every, every sign, mm -hmm. because really what I found was that every sign reflects all the other signs. You know they work symbiotically we're normally used to just going oh i'm say pisces or something so then you just focus on that and then disregard the others but when you learn the others then you learn actually about other people yeah. like you know really deeply like you you know so when say like certain people are going through difficulties they react a certain way which is different to your sign so if you don't understand their sign then you think well they're, they're really off Whereas when you understand their sign, you go, okay, I understand that sign needs more space to integrate, but actually they'll come back out of it and they'll be great again. You know, they'll be happy again. So all of a sudden now understanding relationships, which is also Venus, as you know, so it's like, you now know how to connect with others, what others are also going through in their journey. You know, like Scorpio goes through seven, uh, seven evolutions of death and rebirth. Wow. So, you know, if somebody has Scorpio in certain placement, you know, they're, they're going to be going through some pretty hefty things to and evolving each time. And that's if really if they take the lesson from it, because obviously they can go through a death and rebirth and not learn. So mm. they have to go through. So if you know that in somebody in your family, then you understand them and then you can communicate with them. So I think that this is going to help bridge this gap of how do we interconnect? How do we relate? and also the empathy and sympathy of, of each other. Uh, and so, you know, like with you, with the Pisces, for example, you know, is your sun sign, you know, that's uh, in the word, it's about gnosis, you know, which is sort of more than knowledge. It's, it's that knowingness of consciousness itself. So between you two, you've got mysticism and gnosis, right? So this is why you can start to see like how that dynamic works and why you love doing what you're doing now, because it's like you both get to dive into it with your understandings and so this is how it's going to bring people together and i think that's what the book is really trying to say that everything is all connected we it, everybody is able to come together through this and of course it resonates with the frequency of gaia so uh i think that's really the testament of the book 100 <laughs> percent, and i think that is lovely and 
I think what you're saying there as well is that, you know, by doing these things, you're going to get an understanding of other people and that in itself creates compassion, doesn't it? Yeah. So, you know, instead of having love, uh, having war and judgment, we're, we're going to be moving through a, a place and a space in time where we're kind of looking at things from, from compassion and love, which again is raising the vibration of love frequency, thus adding to all of those kind of, you know, energy frequencies for Gaia. And it, I just think it's it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it really is amazing what, what you've done. It's so just... eye-opening, hasn't yeah. it, as well? And I think each interview you've done, you've brought something else to that particular thing that resonates with mm. whoever that audience is going to be. And I feel like this is going to be very um, adaptable for people to understand yeah. as well. I can't I think, wait to the book. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. I, think, I can't wait. I've already pre-ordered mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. good. Thank you so much. Yeah. And yeah, I think that, you know, there's so much in here. There is so much. I mean, every, in the book, when you read it, every sentence is like jam-packed. I mean, the way in which it's written, you know, reading a page of this book is like taking a breath because there's just, it's not sort of strung out in sort of like a long story. It's sort of, in a way, it's like bullet points rounded off into story. There's a lot of information because it's got all the numerology, all the mathematics, all the symbolism, you know, it's all there packed in there. And so it's it's such a great trip because every every paragraph is like another thing to integrate and to learn. And it just keeps you moving forward through the journey. And that's why I say like, yeah, there's so many things that we can speak about in the book. Um, and so it's great, as you say, you know, to share with you and your audience about this side of the book um you know and other people might be interested in more the mathematics or whatever so it's yeah it's it's abundant in in its wisdom and that's why i say it's sophianic because you know sophia the goddess you know sophia means wisdom mm -hmm. um and so it's sophianic you know it's it's the goddess wisdom coming back and it is just it's like mother earth it's just full of abundance it just keeps growing yeah. and the more that you access it the more it keeps giving you you know these fruits and these flowers to to look at and you like colors and it's like it just goes on and on and on and it's like wow this really is the understanding of everythingness and therefore it's all inclusive you know nobody there's not one country not one race not one creed not one religion not one myth that it doesn't connect with and say, look, that is actually the same as this and therefore it's this same teaching. And so really that's where we get all of it from. Uh, and that's why I say in the King's Chamber, before you get into King's Chamber, there is what they call the Grand Gallery. And and what I say is that, you know, the stars is is the silent movie. It's the Grand Gallery of, of images in the stars, you know. And so that's where all of the archetypes come from because first man looked up and was like, oh, saw at these shapes saw these stories in the stars in the native american you yeah. know symbols and aborigines or the originals i should say and so it's really just bringing it back the heaven is coming back to earth it is on the earth and it's time now that we started to to see that and uh you know meet each other through through that wow Thank you so much, Rob. You truly are a gift. And I could sit and talk to you for hours, literally. I could just sit in there and just hog you to myself <laughs> the whole day, just asking you questions. But I'm well aware that you, your time is precious. And uh, obviously our listeners' ears will be burning and they're probably going to have to really struggle to, to take all this in, what we've been talking about, because obviously it isn't for the faint-hearted, even though it's simplistic in its form. It, you know, it really does take a toll on you kind of getting into that empathic well, space to, to it's like you it unlocked the secrets of the whole universe yeah isn't it? You're yeah like you're listening I don't, about, I don't know about me but I, I definitely um you know things like the I Ching, for example you know it's it's a magical book you know and so that gave that's a, a huge basis of understanding the matrix but i would say probably for me it's yeah like i wanted to understand this you know I, this is my journey also you know it's not just like I, I didn't just know and then share it's like i had to learn so i love to share things in the most simplistic way that's also creative and artistic and easy to learn and listen to so all i've done is through me learning this i've just brought that into the most beautiful parts i can and sh just share it in this way so yeah i think it's we're definitely getting to understand ourselves uh, and the universe as this one thing and you know hopefully these you know this book is is a way in which people can do the same and that's really the prayer for this book you know it's just yeah. i hope that everybody can see the same thing as i've seen and it's all laid out in the book so there's nothing 
there's no mysticism there in terms of you know was there a secret calculation i literally show you the exact process of everything in the book and say you follow the journey and make up your own mind this is just my what i've found and i feel like you'll probably come to the same yeah. conclusion wow. it's all there it's fascinating thank you so much thank Rob, you so for coming much on today. Yeah. we'll pop all of your links in the show notes as well and anyone who wants to pre-order rob's book the lost octave please do yeah. and uh, we will be patient, patiently awaiting our copy we shall. <laughs> we shall um thank you so so much honestly it's been a, a an honor, honor to yeah to have you, you on today. here and we'd love to have you on again at a later date and you know discuss once i've actually read the book and digested it <laughs> yeah have you back on we'll have more notes yeah we'll have more <laughs> notes and i haven't even covered i had a whole load of things to ask you and it's gone on its own organic way yeah and it's and gone where it's meant to go it's meant to go 100%. and you know i'm really really grateful for no. your time Thank, no, thank you both. It's it's so so amazing, you know, to that you you contacted me and wanted to do this. And you know, I think it's the more that we can share and share with each other. You know, it's a it's a way of we have to share it in order for then it to filter out. You know, otherwise it's just closed knowledge again. So, you know, thank you for what you guys are doing, and um, you know, thank you for having me on. It's also a great pleasure to meet you both and to share with you about this. And yeah, we'll definitely have a when the, I think when the book's out and uh and everything then um then it'd be good probably to to have another another look at it all and um and share with you again so yeah, thank and that's you so first of may isn't it it's coming out rob is that right yeah fingers crossed i mean yeah. you know it's just i mean i added even in the last month probably over 100 pages because it just more codes came out and it was just like i can't not put this in the book because it it's so there and so you know it, it expanded but yeah the 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 basis is that it should come out uh the first you know first of may or the first week of may um because that times into gate 72 which is so that's my <laughs> that's my plan it's exciting times as we uh, step into that aquarian age but uh yeah thank you so much it's been so so great to thank chat you with you very much Rob. thank you rob you take care have a lovely day take care all right take care bye, bye.